I think casseroles have a bad reputation to their name, just like Brussels sprouts, but when they're made properly, they do actually taste fantastic and they have great flavor profiles and development. In this one, we're gonna be doing a beef stock and red wine base, but like all of my recipes, if there is alcohol in it, you can substitute it for other things and I'll leave all of those details in the description below. Also, before we get started, make sure you go follow me on Instagram and TikTok. I'm trying to get 10,000 followers on each and also sign up to my Patreon page if you're interested in getting early access to each new video. Plus, I'm gonna be adding loads more features soon. All of the links are in the description below. It really does help me out as a creator so let's get straight into it please sit back relax and enjoy all right to start the prep we're going to need three large brown or yellow onions or six shallots if you wanted to be bougie that have been peeled with only the root intact we're going to leave the root on to hold these together and slice these into quarters also don't worry about the root it is edible and breaks down completely in this recipe and the reason for it is to obtain a perfect caramelization which i'll show you later on next is three medium-sized carrots that have been washed and the peels left on for added nutrition lay them down together and slice off the stem end saving them scraps for a stock and proceed to slice into three centimeter large pieces with the large pieces being better for slow cooking. To complete the mirepoix, here is three ribs of celery, which is optional but is recommended for the best flavor outcome. Slice these up the same way and size as the carrots. We're then going to need six cloves of freshly peeled garlic that's had its woody stems removed, and all we're going to do is crush it using the side of our knife with the blade facing away, which will activate the allicin compound, which is what gives garlic its strong flavor and aroma. Last but not least, this is optional, but roughly chop five grams or 0.3 ounces of thyme, and this is going to be used as a garnish. Now here we have 1.4 kilos or three pounds of diced beef bowler blade that's easy to get at your local butchers or supermarkets, and this can be added to a mixing bowl. To this, add in 70 grams or 2.4 ounces of plain all-purpose flour, then give this a really good mix, ensuring everything is covered and no moisture remains. This right here is what most recipes lack. They usually suggest a way smaller amount of flour, which will make this wet and clumpy, which will cause the meat to steam when cooking and ruin the final flavor and texture. It's also good to use beef bowler blade with this as well, because when slow cooking, it literally melts in your mouth, whereas chuck steak, which other recipes suggest, can still be chewy and ruin the texture. Don't get me wrong, I'm not slamming anyone. This is just what I've figured out over the years of experimenting and I only want the best recipes for you guys. To get this cooking, place a large high rimmed pan or pot over a high heat. Once hot, add in one tablespoon or 20 milliliters of olive oil, then add in the floured beef, shaking off any excess flour, also doing this in batches, which is another tip to achieving the best flavor and texture. This can then be seared for two and a half to three minutes per side to achieve a nice golden crust, which will lock in all the moisture, preventing the meat from being dry and chewy at the end. And the reason for batch cooking is to allow the surface heat to be evenly distributed, because if you chuck it all in, the pan will cool down too much and start sweating the beef instead of searing it, preventing a crust to lock in all of that moisture. Once that's done, the beef can then be removed and placed into a clean bowl to rest for the time being. Then add in another one tablespoon or 20 milliliters of olive oil and repeat the same process, getting a nice crust on both sides, removing it from the pan. Now reduce the heat to medium high, add in another one tablespoon or 20 milliliters of olive oil, then add in the onion, carrot, celery, and garlic and saute for four minutes, moving it around regularly, which will start picking up the left behind beef flavor. Also with the onions, you can make sure that they're laying on a flat surface and this is going to give them a beautiful caramelization, only increasing the flavor even more. After four minutes, add in five grams or 0.3 ounces of whole thyme for freshness, sea salt flakes to taste, and of course, 10 cracks of black pepper and continue mixing and sauteing for one more minute. Next, deglaze the pan with one cup or 250 milliliters of red wine or beef stock if you can't consume alcohol, mixing this through to pick up any stuck flavors on the bottom and allow this to reduce for two minutes, which will reduce down to about half a cup's worth or 125 milliliters and start concentrating the flavor. Once done, add in two and a half tablespoons or 35 grams of concentrated tomato paste to create a great depth in the overall flavor and mix this through and cook for one minute. This will work really well with the wine or stock and start to thicken it and create a perfect foundation ready for our next ingredients. Let's add the seared beef back in with any resting juices, also adding in two and a half tablespoons or 50 milliliters of balsamic vinegar for sweetness, acidity, and a beautiful molasses-like flavor, one liter or four cups of beef stock to create the sauce, and three bay leaves for a piney fragrance, and they're optional if you don't want to use them. Give this all a really big mix to combine and allow the flavors to become friends and then bring this to a boil over a high heat, stirring it through every now and again. Once boiling, place on a lid or foil if you don't have one and transfer to a preheated oven set at 180 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit and braise for one and a half hours undisturbed. This can now be carefully removed, leaving the oven on, and place it back onto the stovetop or onto a heat resistant surface, then carefully remove the lid or foil and give this a gentle mix to combine the surface oils and flavors. At this stage, the meat will be extremely tender, but we're not quite finished. It is then a good idea to check this for seasoning, adjusting accordingly with sea salt flakes and cracked black pepper, mixing it all through well. 
Carefully transfer this back into the oven with the lid off and brace for a final 30 minutes to ensure we get maximum flavor in the sauce. Then carefully remove it again and turn the oven off. Give this another big mix, ensuring all of the flavors are well combined, being gentle not to break the beef, and garnish with the optional roughly chopped thyme to add a little freshness. And I will also mention the thyme I'm using has really soft stems, so you won't be eating sticks in your final meal. Serve this up into bowls, either on its own or with a variety of different sides, which I'll leave in the description below. Be sure to soak this all up with that delicious rich sauce, and this recipe serves four to six people, depending on portion size. Garnish with flat leaf parsley, which is of course optional, and this then leaves us with this beautiful, perfect casserole that has the best flavor, texture, and guaranteed to impress anyone you serve it to. The only thing that's then left to do is make all of this worthwhile, and that is we can then gently break apart that melting beef, and we can then dig in.